All right, well, I've started recording. Do you want to start? Okay, now now we're live. Uh, I did not expect this to happen immediately after my last live stream. Um, to, uh, today, I'm going to debate the filthy heretic who is an anarcho-capitalist YouTuber. Hi. Um, who, who, who believes, who, who will, um, today we're going to talk about the non-aggression principle. Um... Okay. Uh, heretic, please define the non-aggressive principle. Don't hurt people. Basically, don't initiate force, or more specifically, the initiation of force cannot be justified. And this is come from and this comes from the the first principle of deontological or Aristotelian logic, right? Yeah. Though nobody knows what deontological means. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, sorry, I gotta be a stickler for that. Autistic lizard, okay. Yeah. Okay. Put simply, okay. I can put simply, I can rationalize and prove through pure logic that the initiation of force cannot be justified. Okay. Okay. My arguments my arguments against the non aggression principle is quite simple. Is that it yeah, it, it's quite simple that the non-aggression principle never been exhibited throughout human history and it seemed like violence itself was the reason it seemed like a thousand years of violence was the reason we were able to gather a very high social a very high social trust capital or whatever I essentially believe in property on Tarto Essentially, people who are really use violence, like, with everything they, anything that they see to be valuable. This includes cultural, the state, the books. Um, it, it includes the home setting principle or acquired property through mixing your labor. Like it essentially accounts for all. It essentially accounts for all kinds of property. Essentially. Okay. And my main. My main beef with the non-aggression principle is is it it allows for it allows for free writing, heretism, and other and other and other things that will break down that will break down a libertarian social order or society or community covenant. All right. Um, all right. Uh, do you mind if I say something real quick? Yes. All right. Just to be clear, there's going to be some. Con I know. I know what you mean by social order. But just to be clear to my audience, could you please define that? Uh, define social order. Uh, I view social or, social order as a synonym for society, meaning, or better yet, so social, more accurately, a social order that um, clings to a set of rules, essentially. Okay, so it's basically uh, society and its set of rules. Essentially, yes. Okay, so we can agree on that. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, you're. What were you saying? Oh, on the non-aggression principle is basically it basically allows for negative externalities. Like, for example, for example, you could have a crack you could have a crack house in your neighbor in your neighborhood and it's the stinks got a bunch of old a bunch of older human trash, basically the value basically the value the valuing the property on the land and causing people to leave or move move to to someone else else it's basically um imposition cost so it's it, it's imposing a cost on society and the non aggression principle do allow do allows for this okay uh, uh, for example we saw this in detroit with the white flight we saw this in detroit with the white flight we saw this in um we currently we're seeing this in the inner city. We're seeing currently we're seeing the communities in the inner cities where it's basically, basically pretty run. It's basically run by gangs, which can be seen as a state inside of a state. And it's it it and, and I believe that the non-aggression principle do allows for this. That in order to maintain a libertarian society, it needs to be a very conservative or in a, a conservative society. Well, no. there's, yeah, there's several problems with what you said. First off, in order for your analogies to be accurate about what's going on in Detroit and Chicago, you would have to be arguing 
that the situation or the status quo in those cities is non-aggression principle compliant, which it's not. I mean, I think we can all, I think we can both agree that there is a state that oversees these cities and the states themselves, a state with a lowercase s, and the federal government too. So these are not laissez-faire, free market, uh, non-aggression principle compliant regions. Okay, yeah. I think that's a fair objection to it, but what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to say is that I think the non-aggression principle cannot be scientifically demonstrated, scientifically demonstrated uh, throughout our through through our history of civilization. Like um, the closest thing I can think of to a non-aggression principle or in a society is the Wild West, where people are basically really far away from each other and barely interacted with one another. And this is also a good case for spontaneous order, which is quite mm-hmm. which is quite interesting. But um like moreover, like those are a type of society that uh, kind of abides to the non aggression principle, but you know that um but that's um do you agree with that example though? With the Wild West? Yeah, that that's like closest thing to a non-aggression principle society. Possibly, people... I would say the I would say the closest thing to a non-aggression principle uh, society would be uh, ancient Ireland under Brennan Law. Well, I'm like for I'm talking about like more of like a recent example, like the Wild West in America. That's I think many libertarians consider that the experiment in in anarcho capitalism. That's not an argument I've ever heard, nor have I really looked into it. The most I can say about the Wild West is that the kind of uh, lowercase anarchy that p- people point to where everybody was just shooting each other at random, the kind of thing that would be depicted in shows like Westworld or old Western movies that you just have uh-huh. bad people marauding the place. It's entirely fictional and the place is actually extremely peaceful. Uh, that's that's the thing. Like it has like one of the lowest murder rates in history. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's sort of like the thing. That's the thing. That's closest thing. That's sort of what I'm trying to get at. If we're going to have like a all a non-aggression principle society, it seems like people need to be very far away from one another. Like it's far away from one another, and this is not like um, it's basically like a frontiersman mentality that you're barely going to interact with other people. That's what I'm trying to get at from a well, people, for people who believe in the non-aggression principle. All right. Well, I would also uh, say that we can demonstrate the non-aggression principle in practice right here, right now, with the fact that you and I are interacting. And I didn't need to force you to do anything. I mean, you already said, like, this stream, this live stream was made on extremely short notice uh, at my request. You didn't have to agree. I didn't force you to do anything. But, uh, but- you did so anyway, and you even agreed to the the one rule I said, uh, which is basically just no swear words. That, that's, the, that's the thing, like, I was just trying, that's the thing, I'm a pretty nice guy, but but I, I, what I'm saying is that we're able, the reason why we're able to achieve that type of trust among us is due to the fact we had previous interaction with one another, mm-hmm. and the reason why sure. people generally have a strong trust among another, and at least in the West, is due to the fact that People were violently suppressed. That people were violently that the West that the West was basically um, um, that, for example, in England that they had a thing called common law. It was basically due to the violent suppress violent suppression of parasites. People were breaking the law, the law, basically the degrading uh, degrading their society. Those degenerates kind of people. Um, it was basically just due to that kind of violent suppression for nearly a thought for nearly a millennium we were able to achieve that type of high trust that high trust society that we were currently living in right now um and I feel like under the non aggression principle that it allowed that this let live mentality will basically basically break down this order like you're basically you're basically uh allowing for um uh like the you're basically allowing for a 
degenerate values like being lazy, being uh, promiscuous, being a um, being like just being like a degenerate person, basically a free rider in your society. Um, you understand what I'm trying to get at? Were there free riders before? Free riders before? Yeah. Are there free riders now? Yes, there's definitely free riders right now. Okay, so I, if you're I, gonna be so if you're I, gonna be uh, yeah, talking about I, the so if we're talking about a non-aggression principle compliance society having free riders, then you're gonna have to answer the comp question compared to what? Now, am I saying yeah. that there's gonna be free riders? There's gonna be zero free riders in a non-aggression principle compliance society? Of course not. But I don't think that that's a goal that's even realistically able to be approached. Now, are there steps that such a society could take to mitigate uh, free riders? Of course. The numbers are infinite and limited entirely by your imagination, but that's a completely different discussion for another time. Well, the thing is, like, Hoppe, like, Hoppe, like the thing about Hoppe, who was more of a conservative than a libertarian, was able to reconcile this by having, like, contractual communities while still be, like, non- Aggression and compliant in this, um, in in anarcho capitalism, in this anarcho capitalist society. Mm -hmm. Like, will you like? Are you willing to use that kind of argument though? Uh, that society will be organized largely by contracts. Yes, like, like it would be like it wouldn't be like it, it like essentially Hopper would stay in that kind of society. You would, you would, as uh, you will exclusively. Um, you exclusively the exclude people, exclude people that doesn't serve your own interests. Like for example, if you run like a family community, like you wouldn't want like like people who promote like a alternative lifestyle. Like for example, homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Um, that, like um, just that's 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 the more realistic way. That's the more like a realistic way if you're gonna have like a non-aggression principle oriented society. Basically, have contractual community covenants where you exclude like if if you if you exclude people that will break down your social order or whatever mm -hmm. so my main point of contention is that um, that the non-aggression principle never really existed among people that I believe that the state of nature is one of parentism that, and for a very long time, that the West, was, the West has, was able to suppress the state, that state of nature, and able to get away from that, and it, and it, and they um, didn't really apply to the non-aggression principle, like um, that much, you know. Yeah, you're just you made my argument for me, actually. And and for some re and for some reason you can. For some reason, I can argue the non-aggression principle better than me. <laughs> well, you kind of—you really did make my argument for me in the sense that you described a situation under anarchism where society could organize itself around the non-aggression principle and be completely non-aggression principle compliant while mitigating the problems of parasitism and free riding. Furthermore, yeah. Furthermore, you said that the state of nature is parasitism therefore it must logically be deduced that any state that forms is going to be formed by people whose nature is parasitism in sense well, or in a sense you have parasites versus parasites which i mean if well, that's what you're arguing that's fine but well the thing is i believe like one of the reasons why i believe the state was ultimately was organized to be a uh, force of violence was basically protect external outgroups from external outgroups essentially invaders well that would only be, is, that would only be answer. true i mean that would only be true if defense was offensive which by de which is obviously a contradiction you don't need an, an organization that has a legitimate legitimacy to initiate force to defend things but that's but that's the thing is like that's sort of like you kind of have to deny history though that seemed like why the state no, I don't. It's it's simply logic. It's, it's it's pure logic. It's not like the thing is like you can be really logically consistent in your argument. Like that's the thing. Like you can totally fall back and entirely consistent. So the consistency of your own argument. But I'm trying to say this is the reality of history. I'm trying to tell you right now. The reality of history, I don't think is relevant. But it should be relevant though. Why not? 
I mean, if you're what? if you have if you have a historical example that proves that the non-aggression principle is logically inconsistent, then that would prove me wrong. I'm telling you how to prove me wrong, and I'm assuming you saw my video explaining the first principles, and I explained pretty explicitly how to prove me wrong. I would prove you wrong. Like I've also proved the non-aggression principle is logically okay. I think that I think like before you before uh, like, the arguments for the non-aggression principle, at least for the liber more libertarian cases, I think you sort of need to have a pre you need to sort of have a preconditions that um, you need to have a high trust society, a high trust society, and people already have a libertarian mindset. And most people, I believe that most people don't naturally have a libertarian mindset. That's sort of like the preconditions for the arguments for the non-aggression principle. And this does this doesn't really work work on that, like because people are inherently violent. People are plunder. People are plunderers, cheaters, um, and many and many other vile things. Well, then that uh, just, that's just that's just why we need the non-aggression principle even more. I mean, just. I'm sorry. Could you repeat what you said? That I'm saying that these. I'm saying that these are the preconditions. I believe that are the non-aggression principle that needs to oh, require right, that. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Need, you sort of need like a libertarian. You already. Like, I think one of the problems with the non-aggression principle is assumes that people are already have a libertarian society. That's sort of like a very universalist principle, though. And well, well here's the thing. Like what you're describing are not. Uh, conditions that disprove anarcho-capital, not anarcho-capitalism, the non-aggression principle, but rather the question of whether or not an anarcho-capital, or pff, why am I saying anarcho-capitalism, a, why a society that maintains a non-aggression principle could not be mainta maintained, but that concern is immaterial to the non-aggression principle itself. Well, you're basically saying that, you're basically saying that due to the, due to the logic behind the non-aggression principle, any Historical or consequentialist uh, argument against the non-aggression principle is invalid because you have to refute the logic behind the non-aggression principle. Correct. Right. Well, more or less, yeah. But that's that's sort of like the thing is like the only way to really that's sort of like the thing. The non-aggression principle is a universalist principle. Like people have different ideas what constitutes aggression. Like in the there really there really like, isn't any consider there really isn't any. Uh, other in con there isn't other any consistent definition of aggression. Like you people think, might have different think, interpretations uh, of it, but that doesn't mean they're all interpretations are correct. People might say two plus two equals five or two plus two equals three. That doesn't mean they're correct. But that's the thing is like we live in a Western society that like that's, if you that's, slap that's not relevant. Well, for example, like like if I slap a woman that it considers to be aggression, but if I'm a Muslim, if I'm an Islamic man living in the Middle East, and I slap a woman. That considers to be like a norm, a social norm. That's still aggression. The fact that they don't consider it aggression is external and not relevant. But that's the thing is, like they wouldn't consider that to be aggression, though. It's a very universalist principle. It is a very universalist principle. That is correct. However, just because people don't accept the universalist principle doesn't mean that the universalist principle is automatically invalid. Things exist independent of our understanding of them. Like, that's uh, that's nice at all. Like, that's uh, I think that's such a very true statement about knowledge existing a priori, but I'm just trying to operate in the what we conserve in the world right now. Well, so far you haven't proven that my first principles do not exist a priori. Which, uh, for, just for my audience's sake, a priori means... Uh, I'm sorry, I can't think right now. Could you please define it? A for I basically you believe that knowledge exists in the mind. Yeah, thank you. And external of our understanding of it. Like for example, like math is very a for I like two plus two equals four, and this is like a very basic example. Yes, uh, thank you very much for that. <sighs> But that's sort of like the thing, like, that's the thing is, like, the non-aggression, like, you can make really strong arguments for the non-aggression principle, but it doesn't really correspond to the reality we live in. Well, the reality we, we live in is rampant non-compliance with the non-aggression principle, which I believe is the cause of a lot of society's problems today. Okay, but 
But I've been saying like people won't engage in arguments as we are right now about the non-aggression principle. Like the the purest argument that ever is basically violence. Like basically, you know, fight though. And for some reason, for some reason, the West was able to suppress that instinct in man. It really wasn't though. They just, they just outsourced it to the state. Outsourced to the state, but that's the thing. Like the state. The reason why I believe the state exists was basically exists as a, a form of to a form of protection against outgroups. You don't so, need you don't need a state to protect against outgroups. But that seemed like that seemed like the that seemed like the, the more historical basis why the state forms in the beginning. I so. don't. It's it simply doesn't follow because you don't need a state which is offensive to be defensive. I mean, oh. sure. There's, I mean, sure. There's overlap. I mean, you have a lot of states that act defensively. I mean, you have the police, for example. But the defense does not necessarily mean the offense, and vice versa. But that's. But what about England, though? England is an island, and they face external. And they face external external threats all the time. So the state, so their state and society, were forced to be defensive. I'm not saying that a state cannot be defensive. I'm simply saying that an organization that is defensive does not necessarily mean offensive. Just an example, I mentioned uh, ancient Ireland before. Brennan Law was extremely, extremely defensive, but they didn't have a state. They had laws, they had courts, but they didn't have a state. That's all good and all, but it, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to give out why my I'm trying to give out why the states why state forms I think it's just partly due to hierarchy a, a threat from external forces that's kind of thing like it the state is more it more likely exists due to protection if anything else like the re, but I think I think that's a total but what you're arguing is what the states do to the people like consider taxation to be um, to be theft because it punishing the productive people of a society. Like no, that's, someone... not, that's not why. That's not why taxation is theft. Taxation well, is theft because it's money. Or it's it's a property that's being taken without the owner's permission. Okay. Okay. Whatever. But I'm trying to say is like someone who's at that type of state formation theory. Um, I'm I'm using. I think Kukiyama, Fresh Kukiyama. Uh, elaborate this that he sort of viewed taxes as more like a price of defense if anything else if the if his state formation theory is true that the state ultimately exists to at protect to protect their people from external for from external outgroups well once again we're back to you kind of uh, completely ignored me because I did say that the defense that defense is not necessarily implied an initiation of force like at all and second, if people want to pay for a defense, they can do so voluntarily. Wait, wait, wait. The two the the oh. two do not the two do not lend themselves to state formation. I mean they could you could end up with a a defensive uh defensive organization that probably had some very severe scope creep. For example, the maybe the night watchman of the night watchman state turned his head around. That's the analogy I like to use of a night watchman state eventually becoming a tyrannical state. That's um, that's that's sort of the thing. Like my well, well that's the thing. Like you keep falling back on the eternal eternal consistency of the non-aggression principle. Well, I do I'm, I do want to be logically consistent. I'm trying to I'm trying to offer you like a more from a more an analytical approach and his for my opposition in history. I don't think your analytical approach is valid or relevant. No, like because I need okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's the best you can do valid. is identi- the best you can do is apparently identify incon- identify problems that would prevent an, an organization or a society or a social order from being one hundred percent non-aggression principle compliant. Well, Which, I'm I mean, trying. If I mean, I don't even know if your analysis is accurate. But for the sake of argument, I'm assuming it is. Okay. 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 On the on the argument on the non-aggression principle, like, okay, let's take it to okay, let's take it to the the most absurd, the most absurd. Uh, excuse exact- me. For, excuse me for a second. Uh, 
just for the sake of the people listening, should I give my theory as to how the state formed? Yes. Okay, so the state formed when someone wanted to live at the expense of someone else. That's it. And then, oh. acted, and then acted on that ambition. <laughs> it's simple, really. I club, give me your food or I club you in the head. Okay. And just like, on, moreover on the non-aggression principle, that, like, um, like on the non-aggression principle, just, do you just believe that people just came, like, in this rationalist abstraction, um, you just believe that people just came to the agreement that the non-aggression principle is a logical conclusion from based on, on arguing, right? It's not that people agreed to it. It is. Okay, okay like, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, can, you, can you prove that it isn't? Can you prove that it is logically inconsistent? I'm still waiting for that argument. Logically inconsistent. Yes, I'm looking for an inconsistency. And I, I'd already told you how. This, that's, that's the thing is, that's the thing is, like, I'm trying to, like, that's the thing is, like, if I throw out consequentialist arguments, you outright reject, outright reject them. But, um... Well, I can't not reject them because they're immaterial to uh, the rationalist argument that the non-aggression principle is logically consistent. Logically consistent, like I don't know, like. Let me try this. Let me try this. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, is consistency preferable to inconsistency? Yes. Okay. I so mean, wait. We can. So we can argue that because the non-aggression principle is consistent, and consistency is preferable to inconsistency, we can therefore extrapolate that the non-aggression principle is preferable to. I don't know what the alternative would be. The aggression principle. There's no aggression principle. There, there isn't. There, you're right. There isn't. But you know what I mean. Like non, non compliance to the non aggression principle. But that's the thing. That's the thing is like, like the non aggression principle. Like you think like let's say for a gang of invaders, like and you're just like some farmer, some farmer, and you tell them, and you tell them, hey, I tell them you're violating the non aggression principle. They won't care. They really won't care. They'll probably just take your. They probably will kill you and take your stuff. You're right. They won't care because obviously their standard for the non-aggression principle is that it would somehow create a magical force field that would make me completely invulnerable. Which, if it did, oh. would be completely. If that did happen, that would be absolutely amazing. But all the non-aggression principle argues is that these gang of marauders, their actions cannot be justified. Uh. Come, come on, that's a bit that's a bit ridiculous right there. Oh no, it's not. It's actually very logically consistent since we're talking about no, ethics like, here. I, I'm not saying like a force field. I'm not saying a force field would be around you. I'm just saying like I just say I'm basically saying that um that I'm just basically saying it's very simple. What I'm saying here that a gang of invaders will just come will come and plant plunder your land and most likely gonna kill you. Like they're not gonna agree. You're not gonna argue. They're not gonna they're not gonna argue with you about the validity of their actions. Like we're like we're trying to decide here, but that's this this sort of just this happens like um like this happens all the time throughout history. Like do you think the you think the Vikings care about the non aggression principle when they decide to plunder villages and take and take their women for breathing? No, no they won't. Of course not. But again that's immaterial because we're talking about ethics and you cannot prove that their actions are justified. <laughs> Well, the thing about morality is, is like a, di a totally different. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about morality. I'm talking about ethics. Uh, um, isn't morality and ethics like the same thing, though? No, uh, morality is the interpretation of ethics. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, uh, no. It's, uh, morality is applied ethics. Uh, okay, that's that's sort of a weird distinction I've never heard. But um, on ethics, though. But we are talking about ethics here, and it's very well, clear that uh, until you can provide proof that the consistency principle is incorrect, invalid, or some other argument or broke, break in my chain of logic that the non-aggression principle uh, is invalid, then we can prove that these gang of marauders, they're aggressing on people, plundering land, that their actions cannot be justified. Not ethically, anyway. 
Well, that's like on that on ethics though. Like I believe that ethics need to be like really reciprocal, you know. Like this sort of like this in group that the in group more um, the in group ethics um, should be like reciprocal. Like like let's say uh, no what no what no, I'm tired. I'm just tired. Just throwing out consequentialist arguments. What's consequentialist arguments all the time? But okay, uh, let's let me refrain. For frame here, but um, do you want to take a one minute break? Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out like you keep. It's, I'm trying to figure out how is the non-aggression principle logically inconsistent, and as the, the thing is, like, is like it may be like logically proven, logically proven, but it doesn't really apply much to reality. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. But you keep rejecting it because you you keep telling me that I need to refute the logic behind the non-aggression principle. This is sort of like the problem. This is sort of like the problem. This we're, we're not we're not seeing the eye on eye, the eye, eye on this. I think the only way uh, you could argue that is that ethics have no practical application whatsoever. Well, which I don't think I don't think you would uh, agree to. No, like I believe in objective morality. I believe in well ethics. Yeah. Like, so, like, so I do so believe in God. Like, I do believe in that. But yeah. But so, I'm just. Trying. So I don't see what the problem is. The problem, my problem is that it does. His problem is is not really empirically proven the non-aggression principle. Well, but we. I've that, already. I've already proven that it's logically consistent. And until logic, it is, I mean, we can pretty much just assume that. Uh, yeah, it's proven. Oh, yeah, and that is logically inconsistent. I can prove it. Hey, praise of folly, called Todd Lewis. I talked to him about an hour ago. Okay, okay. I think okay. Let's see. Okay, let's okay. Let me let me bring out one of his, his arguments. He's that that reminds me that he was a Todd Lewis, the, the guy who's currently in my chat debate is Stephen Costello. And Walter Box on the non-aggression principle, and on the non-aggression principle, he sort of brought it to its absurdity. Like, for example, like he find the libertarian. He even once said in one of their debates is that basically, like, let's say, like you think you think the parent is violating is violating the non-aggression principle if it spanks a child. Do you think that's you think that's a violation of the non-aggression principle? Of course. Wait, really? Yes. Oh, wow, that's Walter Clark will probably argue the opposite, but, uh, but yeah, he's not he's not applying the non aggression principle consistently. Then, I mean, I apply the non aggression principle to abortion as well. I mean, yes, abortion is a violation of the non aggression principle. the The fetus is a living, breathing well, not breathing yet, but it's a living person, and it's not going to turn into a skateboard. <laughs> but that's the thing is, like, you think like you think the parent you think a parent. Like you think the parent is committing aggression on the child if it does spank it? Yes. Forever? Yes. Okay. Do you think? Okay. Like, okay. Uh, let's say like you think this. You think? I think this. You do you think the state is? I don't know. Sort of like a parent. Sort of like a parent. Put the uh, discipline a child in if no. you if you really be consistent. No, it's not. Well, why not? Why not? You consider you consider a you consider a parent child. You consider a parent. A parent uh, speaking a child to be aggression, but if the state just imposes like a simple tax on the individual, individual, or throws them in jail for committing a crime, you consider like for example fraud. You won't consider that to be aggression, or I mean, well, fraud is won't... fraud is aggression. It's a form of coercion. Oh, well, like um, where I was going. I, I, what I'm trying to get at is that. Is that um, that that is that is can like the not the non aggression principle can be like really ridiculous at the time like for for me for me personally I do believe that a parent do have that type of authority over the child over the child to dis to, to discipline it like that's nothing this is nothing to do with the non aggression principle but it's just got to do with just being a good parent. Well, good parents don't spank. Good parents don't initiate the, don't violate the non-aggression principle on their kids. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. But well, that's not how. But state of thing is though, statism begins at home. 
And if you're initiating force against your kid as a means of proving your authority, then guess what? You have no authority. At the very least, all you're teaching your kid is that authority belongs to those who wield force. No, that's the, that's the thing is like I was like I was spanked as a child, and I'm a liber- I'm still pretty much a libertarian, but oh, I was like, spanked. I, I was spanked too, but uh, I completely reject that, and I refuse to initiate any force against my future hatchlings. You, but you autistic lizard guy. <laughs> that's never going to stop, you know. Just why do you have to keep it? Yeah, man. <laughs> Rule number one, <laughs> never break character. Oh, man. Can you act like a normal person for... Okay. No. Well, this is as normal as I get. Oh. I, I can't just act like a normal person. For the, last, <laughs> for the last time, autism is not a choice. I want it to be. I can't tell you how badly I want to know what being normal is like. But I don't have that <laughs> choice. Uh, autism is a thing. No, no, this is a little off topic right now. No, no, that's. But that's the thing. That's the thing is like, thing is like the non-aggression principle. Like, does it? Like, does it? I do. I do believe that the non-aggression principle is it's allows for certain things. Like, for example, like will you consider like driving a car to be, uh, driving a car to be a form of aggression since you're more likely to gonna kill someone while driving a car. The fact like, that something might happen. Is immaterial to what could it to immaterial that what does happen? But you're but but you're driving cars. You're putting risk at you're putting risk at other people's lives. Like wouldn't that be a form of aggression though? That's actually a form. That's actually a kind of argument. I that's actually a kind of a logic I hear when people are trying to make fun of gun grabbers. When no, they like, say when they say that. Uh, it's like if you like people shouldn't be allowed to have weapons because they might shoot themselves or they might shoot someone and be, having a gun in the home makes things more dangerous when the argument is actually the same the fact that something could happen and the fact that the non-aggression principle could be broken is completely immaterial otherwise you might as well just ban you might as well just ban people clenching fists because the fist might be used to strike someone no that's that's the thing is that the thing is that you're you're always putting at risk. Like, if anything, like if you do believe in the non-aggression principle, it shouldn't be like seen as a total absolute, though. Why not? I mean, it's got to be logically consistent. Like, come on, like really, like, like for like one of David Friedman arguments, like he is a consequentialist. He does believe he is a consequentialist and a utilitarian. But like oh, one of his oh, oh utilitarianism. All right, continue. Oh, continue. Like, he does like. Like one of his arguments that that is like the aforementioned car example, and some of his other arguments is kind of is kind of funny, too. If you read like the machinery of freedom, yeah, I, the the most the most relevant example is the is the car example because you're always putting someone at risk at a car. Like, wouldn't that be aggression though? No, it wouldn't. Or, it wouldn't. Or, but, but because. Because he's because you were direct consequentialist arguments, or no? Because nothing has happened yet. No aggression has been committed. Simply driving the car is not an aggressive act. Does it? Put but you're other, more like. Does it put, speaking, you're more likely going to kill someone with, in the car, though. Yes, yes, you could. But the fact that it could happen is not relevant. I mean, we don't even accept that under statist law. You do realize that, right? The fact that people could kill other people in vehicular homicide doesn't mean that you arrest everybody who ever drove a car. I mean, well, that, I can't tell you how many times I've driven on the road and not killed someone. That's that's just like, that's just like um, I'm just trying to say is like, it shouldn't like, you can't just not, you can't just apply the non-aggression principle that like consist, like consistent like, you can't just apply it to like every situation, like some yeah, is, some, yeah you can, like some like such situation, you may require some type of coercion. No, like, name, name one. Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay. Let's. Say, name, name, okay, one let's time, name one time that coercion is ol- the only option, the only legitimate option available. And how it. Actually, no, let me rephrase that. Give me a situation where coercion is ethically justified. Basically, 
basically human, basically just removing human trash, essentially. And, and how is that ethically justified? Do you really want? Do you really want bums? You really want bums on your property? That is not really. That's not really a good look, honestly. Well, whatever you might desire might not be what I want. Well, I, I just want like, like in my ideal world, I, I just rather prefer let's just live in a community, hoppy and community covenants. Yeah, and I don't see a problem with hoppy and community covenants. And I imagine the that there's going to be a whole bunch of other people who probably aren't going to want bums on the property. Maybe I want bums on the property, but you can come over to uh, the edge of my property and come over and tell me it's like, hey, these guys, we don't want these guys looking here. Like, let me make a completely reasonable argument to you about why they should get, why they should leave. And you know what? That can be done. No coercion needed. And because it's our property, like we can force people out however we wish. But having the person is being non-compliant. And in that case, they're the ones that are aggressing. Just not, like, not really aggressive. Like, they're not, do they're not doing anything of, I don't know, like, they're just of course, there. Of course they are. I mean, yes, they're, they're, just, they're there, but they're appropriating property that does not belong to them. In essence, it's a violation of, it's a violation of property rights and a violation well, of, pers of self-ownership. Well, more accurately, is is an imposition cost, but um, but my thing, what I'm trying to get at is like the non-aggression principle will take you like to logical absurdities. Like a parent, like for example, like a parent cannot discipline a child, cannot discipline the child, child, or but or more accurately, like, like happen. I, okay, okay. Like for example, for a parent, okay, a parent, a child is playing for their toys, and the parent tells them, "Let's go to the dentist." You know what the child will do? Child will do uh. They just they will listen to their they will listen to their parents and go to the dentist because they don't have a choice in the matter. Would that be like Sorry. that's not really that's so, like well I think the non-aggression principle would say that be aggression though. to take them to the dentist. Like just take like well well not really taking them to the dentist but forcing just, them to the dentist. Yes. Well, yeah, that would be aggression. But. The Why not? Like, the, fact that's, the fact that it's in their benefit is immaterial to the fact that it's an aggression. And besides, the fact that you need to initiate force just shows that you're a bad parent. Not really initiate force. You're just grabbing by the hand and just taking them to the car. They, they may fuss for a, they may the child may fuss for a while. Hey, you're just, you're just taking them to the dentist. Like it's just a no. It's just an average thing to do. This happens all the time. But. That doesn't mean it's not aggression. But the child. But really, would you really care that children, a, ch a child, is fussing about going to a doctor or a dentist? The do the no. child probably would be fussing to go to the dentist. But the fact that you need to drag them there kind of shows that you're not able to convince them or get them to want to go to the dentist. I mean, there's plenty of things you can do as a parent, but uh, again, that's immaterial to the discussion. If you're but, if you need to initiate uh, force. Mean, if you need to initiate force on your child for whatever reason you wish, then you're not a good parent. I'm sorry, that's all there is to it. But that doesn't. Mean, but that's the thing is like, my, like I consider my mom to be a good parent, but she forced me. But she forced me to go to the dentist. Okay. So I. That's not really. That's the thing. That's sort of like the. That's sort of like the absurdity of it. Like that, that, there's nothing. Well, I, there's nothing absurd about it. No, this is just common sense. Though. No, like this common, is, se this... common sense doesn't mean anything. No, it just happens like every day, though. It happens every day. Every day, there's a, there's a non-aggression principle violation. That doesn't make it right. You realize. Like even like even under like like even under a uh, rough party and well not not like honestly rough party is such a crap philosopher but but even yeah, like it. Huh? I said I'm not getting into that about the Rothbard. Okay, but even like for example, in Rothbard, the Ethics of Liberty, he basically say that hey, the parent is allowed to leave its child, leave its child, not to feed, not to feed them, or not to do anything though, with them, because because that requires aggression or whatever, and that's that's totally immoral. Like a parent do have an obligation to their children to take care of them, to feed to, to feed them. And Rodbard was basically stating that um, 
yeah, you could basically say you don't have to take care of your children. That's that's deep. That's deep. That's sort of that kind of showing their immorality of the at least the rock farthing application of the non aggression principle. Okay, but that's immaterial. But but most people will find that to be deeply immoral, though. Okay. Like like you're not like like you're not really disgusted by that. Oh no, I'm I'm disgusted. Oh, <laughs> you just you're not really showing that. No, I have just uh, very little. It's just that uh, very little shocks me anymore. And besides, right, I've, heard, I've heard this. Uh, I've heard this before, so it's not new to me. Oh, you're, oh, you're. Uh, oh, I forgot you're autistic. And I'm jaded. No, you're not jaded. You just seen. You just seen too much early in your life. Maybe, probably, mostly, kind of. I guess. Yes. <laughs> come on, like, come on, like, if people, like, the if people, that, the fact that you could. The fact that you consider some of these things to be absurd, your car example, is, well, you've identified something that, that's really not aggression at all. Well, you're well. Technically, you're always at, you're always at risk killing yourself and others in yeah. your car, and that would be aggression. You're always at risk of killing yourself at any moment, let alone in a car. The fact that it could happen at any moment, the fact that you could beat someone to death at any moment, does not mean that. <laughs> But your existence is a violation of the non-aggression principle. But not. But I'm saying. But if I'm argue, if I'm taking the more David Friedman approach to the non-aggression principle, I probably just say that the non-aggression principle should not be seen as an absolute. No. So. I don't. Then I don't think that the David Friedman interpretation is correct. Well, the way he defines aggression is that you put a bullet, like he way he sees aggression is that. You, you put you put a gun, you put a bullet in a revolver, slit slit it, and you and you click and you click the gun and it doesn't fire. That would be aggression in other in people standard definitions of aggression. You know? Well, for that example, like who would be, who would be holding the gun? Anyone who's anyone. And are you pointing it at someone else or yourself? Your at anyone. Okay, yeah, that's aggression. So. That's the thing. That's the thing is like this is why David Friedman himself don't really view the non aggression principle as a as an absolute because for example the car example like you're always you're 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 technically aggression you're technically aggression uh, people a uh, people people because you're well more likely gonna kill someone with a car you're aggressing hey. some you're aggressing someone is is you're aggressing someone when your aim is to cause physical harm or mental harm. Wow, we've been going in that at 47 minutes. Yeah, it sounds about right. Oh, I was, wow. I was talking with uh, I was talking with uh, Marxist lad for like an hour and 30. Yeah. But, um, um, more, I can, like, more on the proper, I can go into can the really, more proper. I think the more accurate analogy for the car example would be that you said the revolver example, like you put one round, spin it, and then play Russian roulette with someone else. The fact that they are essentially participating in your game involuntarily is the defining factor. It's going to be the differing factor. But that's the thing is that that's sort of like allowing, like the thing is the map sort of just on its own just allow for these negative externalities well we're back to the negative externalities and again they are as you say externalities and are, do not address the logic of the non-aggression principle at all well like just because just because something is logically consistent doesn't create the conditions to be true though that's the only way it can be true again we've, no. already, we've we're kind of going in circles to this point because I'm going to go back to uh, the whole consistency is preferable to non-consistency Ergo, we can we can confirm that unless you can prove that the non-aggression principle is logically inconsistent, that the non-aggression principle being true is preferable to it not being true. <laughs> you just hear someone in the comments saying that the app is fully fit is fully theoretically and full and only followed by people high on the autist autism autism spectrum. I have a very mild form of autism, actually. Yeah, although, although there's that thing is like if the, the if the non-aggression principle do allow for these 
I know you hate. I know you hate this word. Hate this phrase I use. Uh, ghetto ethics. Yeah, that's but, a that's a term that I think only that only you understand between us. Well, as of right now, like that, there's other people that will really use the term ghetto ethics. Well, probably your viewers or Trudeau Town fans, but that's scary. Well, that's those are those. Uh, we're not getting into him. We're not getting into his yeah. fans. But the thing is, like, get ethics, like, these things will break down, like, this thing is, like, the NAP is not really positioned to run, like, any libertarian or anarchic society, though. That is just partly just, it just basically allow, just allows for these, just allow for free riders to just exploit the system. Again, that's and, exter- again, that's external and not relevant. Ex- but it's, but you keep saying it's, you, you keep saying it's irrelevant, but... It is. I, I mean... The fact that free riders exist does not prove that the non-aggression principle is inconsistent. See, my standard for disproof is a logical argument that can disprove the consistency of the non-aggression principle. The fact that free riders exist is not logical proof. Well, logical proof, but let's think. Okay. Is this... It just, it, like all I have to do is just disprove you, just find an inconsistency in your very logic. Yes. Okay. Okay. Lay out, lay out your argument coherently and precisely for the non-aggression principle. All right. So you want me to start from the top? Yes. Okay. So the basic idea is that it forms from the first principles of logic, which starts with the rule of non-contradiction which for something to be true, it must not contradict itself. For example, an apple cannot be an apple while also being an orange, since the two are a true dichotomy and are therefore mutually exclusive. And from that, we can get the, we can get the consistency principle that an apple is always an apple. And this is always going to be true, whether or not it's in New York City, it's in Japan, or it's in orbit around Beetlejuice, which is the actual name of a star, by the way. And from that, we can therefore derive, and we know that the consistency principle is true because consistency is preferable to, or consistency is prefer. We know that consistency is preferable because that the statement inconsistency is preferable is self-contradictory because uh, you're basically arguing that it is consistently true that inconsistency is preferable, which of course the statement cannot be true because it's a violation of the principle of non-contradiction. And from that, we can get the burden of proof. The burden of proof says that an active, in every situation, there is an active side and a passive side. And if you tried to prove all of the things that you weren't doing right now as a passive side, you couldn't do it because the principle, I'm sorry, the possibility of disproving the infinite number of things that you aren't doing right now, it's just, it's impossible, can't be done. Therefore, the only possibility is that the active side must justify what they are doing. Similarly, we have to, we have to recognize that force is active. It has to act on someone and thus the side that's initiating force or advocating the initiation of force has the burden of proof. And from here, we can derive that the burden of pr- not the burden of proof, that the initiation of force cannot be justified. And we know this is true because imagine the statement that the initiation of force can be justified. The only way to apply that consistency or the only way to apply that principle consistently would be to argue that the initiation of force is always justified, in which case, because of how burden of proof works, the passive side, the side that's being aggressed against, is always in the wrong. Therefore, like all the things that you aren't doing, or all the things that you are doing that are not aggressive, such as eating, sleeping, or even simply being the last person alive on the earth after everybody killed each other, that those that, that cannot be justified. 
and therefore that's going to create a rather significant inconsistency. Now because these statements are a true dichotomy, we can therefore extrapolate that the initiation of force, to, it just can't be justified. Okay. Okay. Just like happen, like, again, like, um, like, all I have to, all I have to do is that mm -hmm. just to find uh, inconsistency in your line of lot in your re in your chains of logic. Yes. And, and all I've been doing for the last fifty five minutes is just trying to tell you uh, these what these uh, inherent immoralities that the map allows for, and you keep saying that's immaterial. You keep saying that's immaterial. Immaterial. Yes. Just um, why? I'm just wondering, just why? Why do I need to refute the nap in that specific way? Then I, then I can just, just um, why? Do, why do I need to refute the nap in that the way you want me to, the way you want me to do it? Because these principles are derived from logic, and the only way for them to possibly be wrong, the only way for these first principles to possibly be incorrect is for the logic to be broken and are external to the external to empirical evidence because the only way that empirical evidence would possibly prove it wrong is if the first principles themselves were wrong just for, an example, just, for, just for an example you would have to prove in existence something that has contradictory properties or something that is inherently contradictory or something that is inherently uh, inconsistent. Now, inconsistent doesn't mean that something can't transform to something else, but that something can transform to something else while also being what it was originally. Well, that is, well, I cannot think of any example, any example of that because it really doesn't happen in, in nature that much. Or honestly. ever at all. Yeah, I can't. I, because the pr first principles are correct. First principles are complete. Like I'm saying, like logic is a good way to obtaining truth. But while we can't just not bring, like what we're doing, what we're dealing with is a very high level of abstraction, and we cannot, like we cannot really just come to, we cannot just come to earth about the reality of the human condition, the human condition of it. Those are externalities, which are not what I'm discussing right now. Right now, we're, I think the problem right now is that you're focused on the externalities of the non-aggression principle and the consequences derived from it, and whether or not it's even possible to be implemented. And I'm worried about the principles themselves. But that's 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 the thing is like that's 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 the thing. I could just outright say that the non-aggression principle is a procedural is procedural scientific is procedural scientific. The only way okay. you could possibly do that is to reject all science, reason, and logic. Well, that thing is like well, that thing is like rash. This debate between rationalism versus empiricism, like, like if you do reject rationalism, that doesn't mean you deny science or whatever. You don't deny I'm science. Saying, I'm not saying you have to accept rationalism. I'm just saying that you cannot say I'm wrong without. First, uh, proving where my chain of logic is flawed, or proving that the or consistency principle or the rule of non-contradiction to be false, because otherwise you're rejecting all science, reason, and logic. Well, that's the thing is like that's that's the thing is like the that's the thing is like my main like to ear uh, to re say again that the problem with the non-aggression principle is that it's just. It's just not efficient to maintaining a society, a, a very high trust, libertarian social order. That's the thing is, that is not is not persistent enough to do that. Why and not? You, Why not? And I, I, I made this argument like several times on Discord and wherever. And why not? That's the thing is like the non-aggression principle do allows for in more do allows do allows for in several a more high highly a highly immoral world like it's basically like if we have a if we do have like um um a non-aggression principle world it's most likely going to be like walter's walter's black defending the undefendable world 
if you ever read that book. I have not. Basically, Walter Black take a contrary, takes a contrary position on every level of crime that you can imagine. Hmm. Well, victimist crimes that he describes. Well, how about this then? Uh, let me just think about it like this. So let's take the question of free riders. Now, what specifically the free riders are doing I don't think is important. So let's just say this. Do you want free riders in your community covenant? No. Would you want to be part of a community covenant that accepted free riders? No, I would not, but they are allowed but that but they are allowed to form their own community covenant. Like they're gonna be on the fringe of society living in ghettos anyway. Okay, so that's then then then, then that's not your problem. So I think you kind of already solved the free rider problem and that's something that the non aggression principle allows to do. I mean Will free riders exist under a non-aggression principle compliant society? Yeah, but well, there's also going to well, be solu- there's also going to be solutions to the free rider well, problem under a, f- under a non-aggression principle compliant society as well. The thing is, like, we're not living in anarcho capitalist society right now. That's and correct. Just, that's the thing. Like, capital, like, if we're gonna have an anarcho capitalist society, it's most likely going to be hop- hoppy and community covenants as the lead. Maybe the people will naturally, Maybe. Well, naturally I mean, form groups. Now, I don't know this one way or another. You probably are correct. I don't know, but I think you've kind. Of, I think it kind of already solves the problems that you've identified. In which case, that the point that the non-aggression principle is insufficient to solving these problems, I think you've already disproven. Since it's, well, you the already thing have, is like it's not. It's it, insufficient. It, this solves like current problems. Like, it won't solve gangs. It won't solve... Oh, well, on the, con- on the contrary. contrary. You want to know how it solves gangs? Would you like to, uh, know, how to, would you like to know how it solves uh, gangs? What? Okay, so gangs primarily exist because of whatever it is that they're trafficking in, whatever market that they're spying and selling. Right now, it's drugs. It's because it's illegal. And what happens when something is illegal... Well, when a commodity is legal, is that the people who are trying to sell it are going to increase their price. They're going to escalate the use of force because the state is using force against them. You saw this with prohibition in the 20s. And when you had prohibition gone, it simply wasn't profitable to be as militarized as bootlegging was at the time. Just that. And, just when, you, that. and when you apply the non-aggression principle consistently, it means that... Uh, Drugs will necessarily be no longer be illegal, in which case it serves no purpose for these gangs to exist. Okay, okay, like, like, okay, like on my last point, saying that this emphasis on the society, I didn't really address your question there. Like, like for if you're trying to obtain a libertarian or more of a conservative society, like you just need to have like a type of a type of Essentially, essentially, people need to know why it's good to be moral, why it's good not to be a degenerate, not is is why it's good not to be a he, a hedonistic, hedonistic hyper individualist uh, guy, kind of thing as we experience in our current in our current society where basically where nihilism is taken is taken over right now. All right. Um, I, don't they, see, I don't see why you need the uh, to violate the non aggression principle to do so. Well, I was uh, well. I was discussing. Uh, I was like the thing is like I reject. The thing is like I don't want to be held back by the non-aggression principle in my what I'm trying to develop as my own personal philosophy because my framework do allows for allows for violence. Then then, um, your, then your then your framework is logically inconsistent. Not it's not logically consistent. Yes, it it's is. Not the thing, like, yes, it no, is. the thing is like no, like, no, no. Like the thing is like I'm trying to say is that. I try to be. I try to take a more analytical, a more analytical approach to things and try to understand. Hold on a second. I might have. I might have jumped the gun here. In violence, is it the initiation of force or defensive? A bit of uh, a bit of both. Okay, so then yours is logically inconsistent. No, so like if you're initiating force, then you're cre- you're essentially going to create a double standard. That's just how it's going to work. 
It's well, it's not it's not ethical and it's not logically consistent. Within like within groups, um, it's sort of we're not talking about of... we're not talking about in groups. We're not talking about in groups. In groups are immaterial. Okay, okay, like I'm okay to explain my framework is that I'm trying. I'm just trying to take an analytical framework. I'm not trying to deal in what how society ought to be, at least not yet anyway. But I'm just trying to figure out why do viol- why do violence exist? How do we make violence not as not as profitable as before? Uh, that's the that's the thing is I'm trying to I'm just trying to take a more analytical and borderline empirical approach to these um, to the to Western institutions and and from and from my understanding the non-aggression principle never been really applied that much throughout history. And and um, that's pretty that's pretty much it to it. Like it could be re- it could be really logically consistent. It could be internally consistent, but it doesn't correspond in the reality of the world we live in. That's sort of like how, I don't see how it doesn't correspond to the world we live in. In what world is logic or in what world is this that logic does not apply? Like logic is. Logic is basically the the this the basically just coming to basically just finding truth, and they're just they're just basically different ways to obtain truth. Like you have dialectics, you have Aristotelian Aristotelian logic, you have classical logic, and other basically basically different schools of thoughts on logic, essentially. But there is only uh, one. There is only one logic, and some of these schools have errors, while others are have different errors I'm still trying to figure out the ways in which the non-aggression principle is inconsistent like it's like I'm not I'm trying I'm basically conceding to you right now that it may be really internally internally consistent but it doesn't correspond in reality like oh wait I just thought this right now that lately I've been reading Hayek Hayek is a very interesting philosopher, a very interesting legal philosopher. Yes. And one of his, and very one thing that's interesting about him is that he describes freedom he describes freedom without coercion, but he does not view the initiation of force as coercion. Because he believes that um he believes maintaining the rule of law. That he was like in his in his works on law Law, spontaneous order, it's the dispersal of knowledge in markets. Like he came to that conclusion that you sort of need coercion to maintain the rule of law. And for um, um, for um, for um, set for the only societies actually develop the rule of law is the is the West. West and um, yeah, that's logically uh, consistent. That's not really logically. I gotta go. There. Okay, I need to go. I need to end this chat now. All right, I'll cut off the uh, my end.